Good afternoon. My name is uh, Staff Sergeant John Gigon. It's uh, last name is spelled G-U-I-G-O-N. I'm the Staff Sergeant in charge of the Child Abuse Unit at the Sheldon Kennedy Centre. A teacher at Bob Edwards School has been charged with following an incident involving students that occurred in October. At approximately 11.10 on Thursday, October 25th, 2018, we were called to the Bob Edwards School located at 4424 Marlboro Drive, Northeast, for reports that a teacher had inappropriately touched several students. The teacher left the school prior to police arrival. Witnesses report that a teacher arrived at school in the morning and appeared to be impaired. They report the teacher attempted to speak to several students and made inappropriate comments and physical contact. It's also alleged that one student ended up alone in the classroom with that, with that teacher and was prevented from leaving. And he made, and allegedly made some unwanted physical advances and inappropriate comments. The student immediately reported to a teacher and police were called and unfortunately the suspect had left the premises before we got there. Mikhail Kalisnikov, 35 years of age, has now been charged with sexual interference with a child under 16 and unlawful confinement. And thank you. I can take some questions now. What's the background on uh, this teacher? How long has he been with CBE? Has he teach in other places as well? Uh, we know he has taught in Edmonton, but his uh, employment history really is question more for the CBE than for us. I can say he has no criminal history and so yeah this is a his first involvement with police. Staff Sergeant is he in custody or has he made his first court appearance yet? His first court appearance is in January. He was charged yesterday and released with uh, numerous conditions. In terms of the school itself what kind of policy they have plays into your investigation like I'm wondering how was the student allowed to be alone or cornered or isolated from with this individual? <coughs> well, we can, I can tell you that it seemed to be between, a, between classes, so there's movement between classes and corridors and stuff, and it, it was a very fluid situation. It just sort of happened while kids were transitioning between classes. You talk about he came to school impaired. What was the Do you know what he was impaired by? Was he drinking or was it by drugs? From the observations made by the, the victim and the witnesses, uh, they seem to believe it was alcohol. Their observations seem to lend that credence. But we're not we're unsure. He wasn't he wasn't tested or anything like that. Staff Sergeant, can you speak to the actions of the students that were involved in this case, maybe less to their bravery or I mean I understand they reported it right away. Actually they were very switched on kids. As soon as it started happening, you can see on the video in fact where one kid runs to grab a teacher. Uh, the teacher responds almost immediately and discovers a student with the, with the alleged offender. And you know, it really happens very, very quickly. The kids are very smart, really brave, knew something was wrong, responded appropriately. They should be commended. You mentioned there was a video? There is some, uh, uh, most schools have uh, video surveillance. So you see the, the, the alleged offender and, and students walking in the hallways, for example. In, with respect to the victim and only telling us in gen, very, the most general of terms, mm -hmm. what would lead to a charge of sexual interference? Well, sexual interference is, is really a, a specific type of sexual assault that, where the victim is a child under the age of 14. And, uh, you know, it can be sexual assault in general can be anything, any type of touching that involves a sexual connotation. It could be as simple as an a unwanted kiss on the cheek, a, a pat of a buttocks, or uh, significantly worse. How many victims? We, ha we charge on one victim, but we believe there are others. We do consider this an open investigation, still under investigation, so it's quite possible there will be other victims. Have any of them come forward? Are you waiting for more to come forward? We are actually waiting for several to come forward. Um, a lot of them of our, we've already spoken to, but yes, we are waiting for several more. We actually expect that these charges are going to um, bring others forward. Do we know if those would be related to the incident that day or potentially in the past? There's no indication that there's any other incidents in the past, so it's all going to be related to that day in October. What's the game plan in terms of the student body at um, Bob Edwards? Do you have someone that's been staying there? Does resource officers uh, moving forward from this point on, or what? Well, that's really a better question for the CBE, but we know that the CBE has been spectacularly um, helpful with us. They, you know, they did everything right in the situation. I'm sure the children are being offered all the support possible. Did you plan on having a resource officer? Is at the school? 
school, does that request, I believe, that made? I believe there is an SRO associated with that school, but I, I don't remember the officer's name. Is there any special message to parents coming out of this case that you would advise <coughs> I mean, keep doing what you're doing. You're teaching your kids that th this kind of situation is wrong. Um, we're just so happy these kids knew immediately that this was not normal behavior. And you teach them, talk to them about it. S tell them what constitutes good touching and bad touching and make them understand that uh, if it is a person in trust and authority, and like in this situation, there are other people there who are teachers people in trust and authority that will take your word for it and will do something about it. Just do what you did. In terms of the victim, how are they doing? Um, are, they, are they seeking any counseling services or anything of the like? I know that we've uh, we certainly put them in touch with resources through the Sheldon Kennedy Child Advocacy Center. I can't comment on anything that they're involved in, but uh, as far as we know, they're doing well and as well as you can be, but they are, you know, they've accessed resources. Is the victim a male or I cannot comment on that. Their approximate age? Under the age of 16. Which would be most of middle school. <laughs> yes, exactly. Any final questions? That's all I got. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Hold your story one more step. Certainly. Just going back to the video, you said it captured moment, uh, movements of teacher and student who mm -hmm. always was any of the alleged incidents caught on the video? No, unfortunately not. All we see on the video is the movement of the, the children and the, the alleged offender and the responding teachers and vice principals.